So in the vein of automation, here's another very useful tool in Xero that you can use when sending out sales invoices to speed up the process every month to stop you having to manually create invoices. If you have a customer, for example, where you send them the same amount every month at the same time, then rather than having to remember to do it, Xero will do that for you. The first thing you want to do is to go to business and then invoices. And there are a number of ways of getting to this space, but this is the conventional way using the Xero menu. And up here, if you click next to new invoices, click down, you'll see new repeating invoice. Okay. Firstly, all of these fields need to be filled in with the exception of the end date and the reference. So this could run ad infinitum, but if you want it to stop after a certain point, then you put a natural end date in there. For example, we're going to send an invoice to Port and Philip Freight. So we want to send an invoice to them starting every month. We missed last month. So we want to start it from the 1st of July. Now, why I say that is I want to show you what happens if you do it in hindsight, which you're perfectly able to do. You can put any date in here you want, as long as it's within the current financial year. So you want it to repeat once each month. Here you will see the different frequencies. So weeks or months. So each month and it's to be dated the first of every month, the first one being the 1st of July. Now you'll see here, it says the next invoice date you entered has already occurred or i.e. the invoice date you've put in here. So what it's telling you is if you put that date in, the minute you approve this repeating invoice template, it will automatically generate that invoice. So if you don't want it to, to actually approve it or generate it, what you can do is just save it as a draft for the moment. But so we're going to leave that as is and we want it to be due. So this is what the invoice due date will be when it's received by the customer. So if you want to give them 30 days, give them 30 days, maybe it's due on receipt, whichever one. So we're going to put that it's 30 days after the invoice date. And yes, we do want an end date because in the following year, we're going to increase the price. Now, to be fair, you could leave that as it is. And then when it's time to increase the price, you just come back into the repeating template, adjust it, and it will carry on with the new pricing. It's entirely up to you how you do it. Now, I have customers that will do it where they will put a finite date on it because they want to see in the invoicing screen each block of invoicing that they have done for a particular customer, particular if it changes each year or each quarter. So we're going to put that it ends in 12 months time, which will take it to June 2024. So just to make sure that the invoice for the June one is actually generated, we can do it for the 2nd of June, for example. So 2nd of the 6th, 2024. Okay. That's the invoice. I'm ignoring this bit for the moment. Um, the reference, generally speaking, when the invoice is created, it will generate an invoice number, but it could be related to a specific project that you're doing. Now, I have a customer that films conferences for large corporations worldwide. Every time they do something, you know, maybe for a pharmaceutical company, they will invoice them every month for doing the work. But it could relate to a particular month or a particular conference for that month. So what they will do is they will put a placeholder in there. So if you see here, it says insert placeholder, that placeholder could be, this is the one for this month. So I tend to use the month and the year, but you can actually put something in there. So it could be, um, so I'm using, well, okay, it's a freight company. So say we're using, transport to Milan. So we want transport to Milan for July 23. 
then the next time it does it, you'll have transport for Milan for August 2023 and then for September. And if you put in here this placeholder, Zero will create that for you based on the date you put up here. So if it's in July, it will automatically create it for you. You don't have to do it. We're going to leave that there. The branding, unless you have specific branding or stationery you're using, you know, then you can change that. But for the purposes of this, we're just going to leave that as it is. So the description will be trans transportation contract for monthly service. We'll make it up. And then, I don't know, 2500 per the unit price. But there's no discount. And the account will be, you know, it should just be a sales one, but whatever your account will be for that particular sales transaction, the tax rate it relates to, and there it is. If you come down and click here, preview placeholders, it will show you what will be generated in the description and the line description. And just to confuse her, the description here is actually referring to the reference. And then the line description is the narrative that's in the body of the invoice. So that's fine. I'm happy with that. So I, and it's put August because we're in August. It, we haven't generated anything yet. This is all just a draft. So if I close that, that is all you need to do. Then the decision is sometimes you can put many of them on. If you are a company where I have um, some clients who do subscriptions every year, so they will run their subscription invoices, set them all up, but they won't send them out. They just set them all up. So then they'll save them as draft and nothing will happen until they come in and actually approve them. Once they've been approved, then they become a set in stone invoice, which can be sent out. If you want to approve it, but choose when you send them out manually, then you choose this one. But because we are automating this one here, what you do is you click this one, it will approve it, create a set in stone invoice for that period. And then it will automatically send it out on the due date on here. So the 1st of July, it will automatically send it out to the customer on the 1st of August and so on. So for this one, as I said, we're just going to save it as a, a draft and then save that. So then in the previous screen, it was just create new invoices. This is actually repeating invoices screen itself. And you can see there it is. So when I was saying before, if you want to approve it each time, if you want to check it, so it, it will be generated and then you're going to approve it. You can open it and approve it, or you can just click here and approve or click here and approve for sending. Or if you decided, you know, you're not going to invoice that customer for whatever reason, you can just delete it. So there's a few things to note. As I said previously, coming up in here and clicking invoices is not the only way to create a repeating invoice. If you already have a sales invoice set up, so say you're already invoicing that particular customer, you can click within that invoice and there will be, in fact, let me just show you, it'd just be simpler, wouldn't it? And I'm just going to choose this one. And if I come up here to invoice options, you will see it says repeat. If I click on that, it will take me back to that repeating screen and you can add everything all over again. So if I click here, it's already populated for you, but you'll obviously want to make some changes, i.e. the frequency. You might want to put the reference, but it's already done for you. So that's the other way to do it. With the particular fields, other things to note, we've done the frequency. You can pick it monthly or weekly. We've discussed that if you use a date in the past, it will automatically create all the invoices for the previous date, as long as it's within the current financial year. Assuming you've locked the financial year in zero, won't go into that right now. But if your accountant is in your zero, they will lock the date so that you can't do anything prior to the financial year that you're in. Once you've created these, either approved it or approved it for sending, if, say, for example, in October, you wanted to make a slight change or add something to that, that particular invoice, you can do so. But I would suggest if you're going to make changes that you click just to approve, because once you approve for sending, it will send it off and then you're left with changing an invoice that's already been sent to the customer. If you have no chance of doing that, approve for sending is fine. Otherwise, 
click approve and then add it to your diary once a month to go in there and approve these invoices. Once it's been approved, you can then just go into the invoice and make any changes. When you make the changes, though, it won't be in this template. It will be just for that individual invoice. So the next invoice following for the following month will come out as the previous ones. The only one that will be different is the one that you edited. And it's the same thing if you want to add, for example, an attachment. A lot of people will attach an attachment, maybe if you have a purchase order, but be aware that attachment will only ever show up on the very first transaction that is approved. All the others after that, there will be nothing. So if you wanted to show up for each one, you'll need to add it manually to each one. Again, that's where your decision as to whether to approve or to approve for sending comes in. The other reason not to choose a proof for sending is if you are actually invoicing for things in your inventory. So if you have a price list on here or an item list products that you actually are creating an invoice based on, then it may vary from month to month. So again, you can create the template, but you will save it again just as a draft and you will come in each month, make your changes and then approve or approve for sending. So for example, if I was to add a new line here, you'd see if you're coming to the items, maybe you're selling them golf balls and the quantity changes every month. So this month you're sending them three. So you'll then make that adjustment and send. The other thing also to double check, if you have multi-currency, double check that you're invoicing in the currency you want. This one clearly doesn't have it. The other thing to note also is whether you invoice tax exclusive i.e. the VAT is included or exclusive, i.e. you are putting in the net amount because maybe that's how you quote. So you quote people 2,500 plus VAT so that they see. So that's what you are putting into your accounts. And then because you've put it as exclusive, you put the VAT amount, zero will add that on for you. Or you maybe deal with end users, you know, retail people who not interested in VAT per se, and you just give them a flat rate and the rate, you know, VAT is included in there, but you just give them the flat price. So you just put the inclusive. But again, that is entirely a preference to how you work and how your customers will understand it and how you're comfortable entering the, the data into zero so that it makes sense to you and it makes sense from an accounting point of view. Now, what if you want to pause a repeating invoice? Say, I don't know, maybe you're invoicing your customer and you were in dispute or the contract is changing earlier and you haven't agreed the details yet or for whatever reason. All you need to do is go back into your template. And remember, this is for the future ones. And you'll see here that your end date is the 2nd of June 2024. All you need to do is bring that date forward. So, for example, our next invoice is due for the 1st of September 2023. If I put in there, for example, uh, 31st of the 8th, 2023, this can't be after the date and it will tell me that if I try to, to, to change it. I mean, well, if I save that and I'll show you. Yeah, so end date must be on or after the next invoicing date. You could do it on the 2nd of September 2023. It would mean that this one would run and then there would be no more. It's not the end of the world because you can just go and void the invoice if, if you wanted to, if it hasn't gone out. If it's been approved for sending, then obviously you'd have to create a credit note and clear it that way. OK, so let's just go to that customer. So it's port. Let's find them. All right, so it's this one. And here you'll see where it's created the first invoice for August and the previous one for July is already there. So th this one is sitting as a draft, but I could open it up. And as you can see, instead of it opening up in the repeating template, it opens up as an individual invoice and you can make any changes in here that you like and it won't affect the template. If you want to update the template, then you click on here. But in here you can do, and when I was saying before about adding inventory lines, you could do it in here because these ones are still draft. They haven't been approved yet. And you can make any changes you like and you can see what the outcome is from this end. And in here you have more options clearly than you will have if you're in the, the actual main screen. So for example, from here, you can 
approve and send it off. But in here, you can preview the invoice. So that will show you exactly what it will look like when it goes to the customer and you can double check that you're happy with it. If not, make any changes to your template. I mean, the actual invoicing template that you default to that all invoices have, you know, where you put your letterhead, your phone number, your bank details, that type of thing. You can also email it out to your customer, print it as a PDF if you so choose. You've got a couple of other options in here. So basically you can just delete it or copy it to another one. It's already a repeating template. So you don't really want to copy this one, so to speak. So once you approve it, all you then have to do is come down and enter the payment when they pay it. Now, one last thing, like Colombo, just one more thing, just one more thing. Your pricing plan on zero will determine how many transactions you're allowed to approve in any given month. So if you have a limit and your repeating invoices take you over that limit, they won't disappear. They will be actually created but you won't be able to approve them. They'll only be saved as drafts. So you can approve them in the following months or because you're trying to wait for your credits to build up again. But just be aware. So if it's something that you think you're going to do a lot, keep an eye on what pricing plan you have because it could really make a difference. Hope that was helpful. Like if you liked. Subscribe if you haven't. And have a great day.